Good morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I am Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. Do you love the Lord? Do you know Him as your Savior? If not, let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the greatest thing you'll ever, ever come in contact with. He can give you joy, peace. He can help you to overcome the trials, the battles, the hardships of life, everything that life has to throw at you. If you've got Christ in your life, He'll help you through that. It will, it will establish your goings. It'll give you a, a reason for life. Uh, I, I'm honored today to get to come to you by means of television, and I hope that these programs that we put out are encouraging you to know Jesus Christ, uh, to encouraging you to know Him better, if you already know Him, to know more about Him, to learn about His Word. I, I love this book. I love the, the Bible. It, uh, it is the road map to heaven, and I, I plan to be there someday. I have the confidence through God that He is going to help me to make it all the way. And uh, I, would, I would love for you to have that same confidence. I'd love for you to know that you know the Lord and that you know that you're going to be saved by His grace and that, you're, that you have that, that full assurance of faith that Paul talked about and uh, not casting away your confidence. So if you have these things about you, then you, know, you can let your light shine before men that, that they can see your good deeds. Uh, I've got a topic that I would love to talk about, and this is the power of prayer. Uh, you know, I, I notice in this country, it, they, when they took prayer out of school, it seemed like that this country just started going down here, hill. Uh, when people don't care anything about praying to God, they start fainting, and that's the way it is in life. That's the way it is with your life today. If you're in, in a situation that you just can't seem to get out of, uh, you should ask yourself the question, do you really have faith that it takes to overcome the things of life, to, to be able to endure? Do you have the faith? Uh, I notice in the, in the book of uh, uh, Luke's writing, he was, the disciples was talking to Jesus, and, and they asked him a question and said, Lord, show us some faith. Give us some faith. And if you want to go with me today, I'll, I'll read some of that. This is in uh, actually the, the 17th chapter of Luke, and I believe this, let's see where we're at, 17th chapter of Luke in the fifth verse. He said, and the apostle saith unto the Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. You know, there's a lot of things that are, that are coming upon the world. There's things that have been happening ever since the days of Jesus Christ and the apostles, and Jesus talked about the offenses that come upon the world, and he said, woe unto him uh, which the offenses come. In that 17th chapter, the first verse, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Uh, these offenses are, are coming, and, and there are people out there that will try their best to destroy God's way. They will try their best to destroy what the Lord has set in, in, in workings for us as Christians to live by. And if we don't Pray to God. I, I'm, I preach a lot here at, at the church in, in Dalton. Um, I preach a lot about where I believe it was Joshua had, had come in, and had built, or Solomon rather, had come in, and had, uh, had built the house and he was dedicating the house to the Lord. And, and he got down on his knees and he prayed and lifted up his hands to, to God. And he prayed to God and asked God, to let the children, when they go into battle, if they will turn toward this house and pray toward this house, that the Lord would hear from heaven and he would come and, and, and avenge them of their, their necessities. So uh, the power of prayer and what God can do. So if, if you are, are faint-hearted today, if you're, if you're troubled, you need to have faith in God. He that cometh to God, as the Bible states, must believe. And believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If we read through this Bible from the beginning to the end, it, it talks about talking to the Lord, uh, coming to God for your, your problems, your issues, everything that you go through. And, and to have strength, you've got to talk to the Lord. Even, even Jesus, when he was here, uh, when he come down to the time for him to die, he went to the garden and prayed to his father. And, and, and his, his, his strength was increased, I'm sure, by talking to God. He prayed to God. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup 
pass from me. Now that's the key to it all, is praying for God's will to be done. Sometimes people pray uh, amiss that they don't really believe. So that type of prayer, it most likely will not be answered. Uh, then there are those that pray for things that are just, they're just not God's will. And, and God, sometimes the answer is no. Um, but when we pray, we have to pray in faith believing. And that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of where I want to start with this, in this power of prayer, the power that is in prayer. These disciples had come to Jesus in this 17th chapter, and they asked the Lord, said, uh, uh, Apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And, and the Lord began to tell him things that he had, had, uh, had done and, and how that he had uh, prayed for people and, and that they had been, he showed them ways that they could have this increased faith. And now I want to go over to the 18th chapter and I'm going to start reading about prayer and what God expects out of us when we do pray. So this is 18th chapter of uh, Luke and the, and the first verse reading down. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, I told you when we first started, if you're faint-hearted today, it's most likely because you're not praying. If you're not praying to God, you're going to faint. Let's read that again. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you want to be strong, if you want to be able to endure, if you want to have power over the things that will help you to, uh, that, that are causing you to be down and out, the things that are causing you trouble in life, the things that you can't seem to overcome, if you want to be strong, you've got to have a prayer life. You need, we all need a prayer life. Uh, the, I believe it was... Uh, his name slipping me, which that's nothing uncommon for my folks. They understand names are, are bad for me to remember. But uh, Daniel uh, prayed three times a day. Um, and, 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 I, and, I, and I notice uh, even with Daniel, when you talk about Daniel and he was in the den of lions, and, and I say that as a den of lions. He wasn't just in a lion's den. You can have a lion's den and not have lions in it. Uh, but he was in a den of lions. And there was a window there, and he prayed toward that window. And the reason that, that was, there was a significance to that is that was toward Jerusalem, toward the house that Solomon had asked the Lord, when your people go to battle or when they get in a place where they, where they need you, if they will turn to this house and pray. Well, he turned toward the Lord. And just like, uh, just like Jonah was when he was in the belly of the, of the well, he said he remembered that to turn toward the holy temple, toward the holy hills from which cometh his help. So that's, that's what we have to do. We have to turn to God. We have to go the knee route. Uh, the knee route will help you. That's what prayer is for. So let's read this, um, Luke 18, 1, reading down. And he spake a parable unto, the, unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, now here's the parable. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Now, what's, he, what's the Lord telling the disciples here? He was giving them an example of, even though this man was an unjust judge and he didn't fear God, what he was saying is that woman would not stop. She kept coming and she kept coming and she kept praying. You know, today you say, well, I've been praying. I prayed for this or I prayed for that. It seemed like nothing's happening. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Lest with her continual coming, he said in that fifth verse, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worry me. So the Lord was trying to get the disciples to see through this parable that they don't need to just give up on God. When they, when they have a prayer for something they need, keep praying. And let's read on what the Lord said. Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, 
which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. See, God doesn't, he doesn't get like the unjust judge. He don't bother God that you keep coming to him. Just keep praying to God. God wants to hear from you. I, I heard a, a preacher one time, he was, he was talking about how that the, the people of, of his congregation would, would not call him at night when they were sick because they was worried about waking him up. And he said, you ought to go ahead and call because more than likely he's sitting up waiting on you to call. The Lord's troubling him that you're having a problem. So go ahead and call where he can pray and, and get some sleep. Uh, that's kind of funny to me that he would put it that way. But the fact is, is, is don't worry about calling on God. Just go talk to the Lord. Lest with her continual coming she worry me. God's not going to be that way. He's not going to be weary when you call. He's going to avenge you. That's what he said right there in that seventh verse. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. God has long suffering. Uh, and that's part of the things that we need in life is to have long suffering. So let's read what the eighth verse says. And I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith upon the earth. This power that you have in prayer, there's, there's some, a lot more I want to get into, and I'm not going to have time today to do it, but come back next week and, and we'll, we'll talk about it some more. Um, when we pray, we need to pray to God in faith believing. We need to know that He hears us. And some people say, well, He didn't answer me, so I'm not sure that He hears me. Oh, He hears you. Sometimes he's just waiting to see if you're going to be persistent. He's going to see if you really want him as, as bad as you say you do. We need to pray to God and just go to God. Go to God in prayer. Uh, if you're not praying, then you're fainting. That's what he said in the, in the first verse. Uh, men ought to pray and not to faint. Uh, if you're if you're fainting, you're you're going back on the Lord. So we don't want that. We want to we want to continually keep our eyes toward the sun. We want to continually keep our eyes toward God, trusting in Him, believing in Him, and knowing that He will He will sustain you. Cast all your burdens upon the Lord, and He will sustain. That means to 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 hold you up, to 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 prop you up, and to build you up. Prayer, power in prayer. There's power. In prayer, if you're looking for a way to overcome, go talk to the Lord. Go get down on your knees and talk to the Lord. Jesus told his disciples to do it. He said that they ought to pray every day, Father, forgive us of our debts that we can forgive our debtors. So that's, that's a key in prayer is to realize that we've got to be humble and we've got to come before God knowing that he will answer our prayers if we believe. That's the key. It's faith and believing. And there's more of this I will talk about. But tune in next week. Come and visit us. We're at 2211 South Dixie Highway here in Dalton, Georgia. May God bless you is my prayer.